Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'd like to this morning just share some of our experiences with the use of coal ash in our industry. Um, now, as you heard this morning, a lot of our coal comes to Israel and gets burnt in your power station. And the ash that you have is not necessarily the same ash we have in South Africa because we get all the bad coal in South Africa. All the good coal goes to Israel <laughs> and other places. And it's not good, I know. <laughs> Nevertheless, the work that we deal with, we deal with up to 27 different types of Class F fly ashes because we have 27 coal-fired power stations in South Africa. So I say all the export goes to you and we sit with the bad stuff. But nevertheless, fly ash in South Africa is not necessarily used in the agricultural industry because we have a very huge agricultural liming industry. And what we found is happening is that there is a greater acceptance of the use of fly ash in the mining industry where we have a lot of the surface coal mines which, have, which are all over the place. Um, we, South Africa, have 122 million hectares of which 13% uh, is arable agricultural land and of which 4% of that 13% is being impacted by coal mining, surface coal mining. So we, we are losing quite a lot of agricultural land. So the objective is then to rehabilitate this land back to agriculture and that is why our coal ash is really showing a lot of promise in this environment. Just to give you a little bit of a sense of where we are, we are the southern tip of Africa. In this part of the country is where most of our fly ash sources are, our coal power, fire, power, uh, coal fired power stations, a little bit up in the north in the slightly drier environments. But this is also the area where a lot of our agriculture uh, takes place. In relation to the rainfall we experience in South Africa, and this is only mean precipitation, we can see the drier part of the country moving towards the wetter part. And as you can see, this area, anything between 400 right up to 1,200 millimeters of rainfall per annum. So it makes it really difficult. And as you can imagine, the soils vary quite tremendously in these parts of the country. Now we use the International Land Capability Class System to understand our different environments. However, in our rehabilitation industry, they only apply a simplified system where they return the land they disturb back to farmland, not prime farmland, permanent pasture, rangeland, which is the natural rangeland class, and then wilderness, which in some cases can include wetlands. However, we keep our wetlands separate because this is a really major issue in our country. So this is the system. And obviously we have various requirements. We know what the different production potentials are related to these different land capability classes. We know what species or crops we can use in these environments. And also because we have a large natural rangeland or natural vegetation, which is pretty unique, it is protected quite closely. So biodiversity in relation to all the other soil um, um, factors are of importance. Now the current land use we use or for agricultural purposes and when returning this land is we have a lot of animal production systems which are obviously established on these rehabilitated soils and a lot of soils that aren't being <coughs> degraded. A lot of crop production systems, various types and, and different hills can be expected in different parts of the country. A lot of pasture production syst systems where we produce a lot of hay for our animal industry. And then the whole objective of our current land uses is to op op obviously optimize the economic value of these different areas. Now, just to give you a little bit of an idea, 10 minutes already, my word, I talk too much. All right, <laughs> thank you. Um, our mining industry is, is quite extensive. And as you can imagine, the impacts are severe. So we remove soil, we put them back, and the soil qualities are hugely different from area to area. These are the type of scenarios we sit and we face where we extract a lot of material and obviously have to rehabilitate this back to agricultural production systems. The pre-mining land use, as I said, can be anything, all the different agricultural uses. We remove the soil, we place the soil back in the area and then we try and rehabilitate it. So we prepare it, we ameliorate the soils and then we come and we revegetate it in various ways or depending on the land capability class which is being reinstated. Now the research questions we face when we deal with rehabilitating these areas 
is what chemical amelioration is required, what physical amelioration is required, biological amelioration, because a healthier soil will give you sustainable plant production. And then we evaluate the indirect response of the plants to these different ameliorated soils. Now in the past when we looked at fly ash, we looked at basically soil pH, we looked at heavy metals, and we haven't gone into too much detail, but what we found was the physical amelioration of the soil and the responses have also been greatly um, appreciated and have changed the system quite significantly. So our general hypothesis of our, our research program is that class F fly ash with or without organic materials, because we've also introduced animal manures, sewage sludge and all those things, can chemically, physically, microbiologically ameliorate acidic and nutrient depleted soils or substrates. Some of these soils are not normally soils afterwards when they've placed and uh, with some areas you don't have good soil and you have to use other materials. But it can, under the semi-arid conditions we face, can improve the root development of these plants and will increase sustainable plant production. Because we're trying to stabilize these soils, we're trying to get the optimum use of these ameliorated soils. So in general, we rely on these principles that acidic soil conditions and compacted soil, because a lot of the soil that has been placed there obviously compacts, limit mine land rehabilitation or agricultural plant production through plant toxicity, the restriction of the plant's root growth, <coughs> The reduction of free living symbiotic and nitrogen fixing organisms which are also in the soil which are responsible for, for good plant production. Increased populations of microorganisms that can oxidize iron and sulfur. And this is particularly in the environments where we have our coal mining where there is a lot of sulfur and iron around. So the fly ash we use is the class F as most of you know. Uh, calcium silicates, calcium alumosilicates. Alkaline material can range from anything between 8 and 10 pH. We have fresh or weathered ash. All the work that we've done to date is on fresh ash, not the weathered ash because the quality is so variable and very difficult to clamp down on the, the, what, what it actually is. But our calcium carbon equivalent is about 20% and this was our initial internationally ref referenced number. But our local research findings find that between 25 and 35 percent of the calcium carbon equivalent can be achieved with some of our better quality class F fly ashes. Now obviously as an agriculturalist we look at what the nutrient na analysis of fly ashes and there's absolutely nothing in there. The only, the only thing that we can find is that this pH can be beneficial and that's why we were very interested in what this can be done because if we can regulate the pH in our soils we can regulate the availability of certain nutrients that are also in these different soils. So monitoring sustainable vegetation performance by evaluating the chemical, physical, microbiological amelioration as well as the reclamation success of these soils is very important and cl uh, uh, class F fly ash can do this. Now our soils Obviously with a pH of 3.3 and 3.6 we have very acidic soils and having an alkaline material such as um, fly ash can really help us in this situation. You can see our, uh, our, our, our soils can vary from really um, very clay soils to very sandy soils and the percentage of carbon can also change quite significantly which also has a huge effect on how this reacts. Nevertheless we obviously compared it to our agricultural lime and uh, we were working on the 10 tons which was based on a, a lime uh, requirement of the uh, buffer curve of the soil and what we did was we used the international reference and said well if we're working with a 20 percent calcium carbon equivalent we'll require about five tons of uh, five tons more of fly ash than lime to try and achieve something this was our benchmark that we started off with and we basically added it in the environment compared it with what the mining companies were doing to try and assess if this may be an alternative way of doing things. Obviously the results, my five minutes is not going to be enough, I've got a lot of data so I'm going to run. Um, but just to show you over a 72 month period we find and this obviously is where our pH initially increased. We can find in 24 months it reached its peak, it was a really wet two years. So you found that the more rain we received, the more reactive the fly ash was in the soil. And as the area, as the uh, rainfall over the cycle dropped down, you found the fly ash was less reactive and you find that the pH was dropping because of the potential acidity that was in these soils. But then again, when we had some more rain, we found that the fly ash treatments then reacted again. 
and that was pretty much that residual don't like talking about residual alkalinity but if you just look at the chemical nature of this flyish that was basically happy but when you look at the agricultural liming products this was dropping down and this is what happens in three years time we have to come back again and we have to apply agricultural lime again whereas with the flyish we found a much more sustainable use now obviously heavy metals is a huge issue we use thresholds of potential concern and this is sometimes a very stupid value because where does it actually come from nobody can tell you but we we do our ICP and it's not as detailed as what we would like to do and we need to do a lot more work on this but we found with some of the um, heavy metals that we had we were well below our thresholds of potential concern which our regulators or authorities use so we looked at it in the soils and at the same time we looked at it in this was for a maize crop we looked at it in the plants as well and we found that we were within these levels but a lot more work needs to be done on this physical amelioration obviously we have these soils that compact and when we added fly acid we wanted to see how compacted these soils uh, or how do they improve and we found that when we started putting in fly ash over a period and this is an acidic soil we found that the bulk density of these soils improved so when you had a better bulk density you had better root prolifer proliferation and uh, penetration and this is obviously very important for the health of the plot so our soils were in the order of about 1.53 this is at an early stage. Some of these soils go up to a bulk density of 1.9 over a couple of years, which is like rock. And you find that when you add the fly ash, because of its chemical or its physical structure, it's flowable. And, uh, and if you just look at the principles that's applied in the concrete industry, the same can be found in these soils. Infiltration rate, obviously very important. We want the water to go in. What we found was that we were increasing the infiltration rate again. If you look at the physical structure of fly ash, the water just moves much better into the soil. And this was something that we found really impressive because we want to get as much water in as we can. Water holding capacity, we found that when we added it, we were improving the water holding capacity by anything between 5 and uh, we had two fly ashes, 5 and 10%. Uh, in this case it was nearly up to to about eight percent that we improved the water holding capacity and that was really uh, impressive for us soil strength obviously we want to determine how strong uh, how, what the soil strength is the soil penetration resistance because our roots need to go down and look for moisture and have to penetrate so what we found is we had a whole range of fly ashes that we're applying when it reaches around about 5,000, in this case, I think our penetrometer was set at 5,500, that means the soil is so compacted that roots will not necessarily penetrate deeper than that. And this was typically our soils that weren't treatment, our standard mine treatment, and our fly ash has just made it so much easier for the uh, roots to penetrate in these areas. From a microbiological point of view, if we don't have microbes, we obviously cannot um, utilize the nutrients properly in the soil. But we found that just with one particular crop, which is a leguminous crop, lucerne, alfalfa, which is a very highly produced crop in our country, we found that fly ash once again increased the mean microbial activity in the soil. And we went in closely and we looked at the nodulation and also the, uh, the um, nitrogen fixation capacity of these things, how it was improved by the fly ash. Just changing that, it could be a pH to, uh, rel, uh, related issue um, where you find that the microbes survive better but we found that there were beneficial effects from that. Alright, I've got lots of data and my time is up and uh, have I got another 10 minutes? Oh, okay, alright, well then, uh, good. Right, thank, thank you Chairman. <laughs> I look at you, okay now we can get some nice, nice fleshy things at the back there. All right, I think indirectly what many times what we do is we measure the indirect response of vegetation and say, all right, well, how do these soils, they have obviously been ameliorated, how do the plants respond? Now, I think it's a great sh shell and toe, uh, a talent shows um, scenario and we can say, well, this plant does better than that and one has to make sure that you do this in replicated trials and that the data is statistically representable. But it is a good indication of what we can expect. Now what we found was that when we work with biodiversity, so the more species there are around, the better. And in some certain land capability classes, it's the opposite. Um, but what we found was with our fly ash treatments, we found we have a couple of species here. And I just want to point out the red bar 
is just indicating the amount of other species there. Now fly ash, because of its change of the nutrient status of the soil, we found that we didn't have such a high biodiversity as what we would expect if we had areas where less was applied. But nevertheless, from an agricultural perspective, we don't necessarily want a high biodiversity, we want more productive plants. So what we found with our fly ash is that the blue and uh, little grey and the different types of species, that these productive plants were obviously benefiting a lot more from the fly ash ameliorated soils. Again, over a five-year period, a uh, six-year period, we found that our dry matter production of this particular pasture in the first year, it was a dry year as well, we found it was an establishment year and in the second year when we received more <coughs> rain as well, we found that we had a significant increase in production but it was maintained. These are perennial crops, they're not annuals, so we found over the five or six year period that these crops would then remain very as compared to our other cropping or other uh, treatments. If we look at the basal cover assessments, now this gives us an indication of the soil surface stability uh, this vegetation indicator because we want to make sure that we don't have erosion because we do not have enough topsoil in our country in the mining industry this is one of the biggest problems is that we do not have enough topsoil but nevertheless we look at basal cover a good basal cover in our natural rangeland is around about 40 percent so top level there and what we found is that our basal cover in these different environments did were, were much more improved with the fly ash this double SFA, that is where we included sewage sludge as well. And we also had a similar process as the Enviro soil, which we then de generated a product which we could incorporate. And that difference there and all the differences we found with this was the organic fraction that was added to this mixture, providing a lot more macronutrients than what you would then obviously get from fly ash. So fly ash was just the change of a chemical effect in the soil and not necessarily the nutrients that we can derive from the product as such. Now, I have a really brief conclusion, and this is how we found that it works, and we're obviously trying to clamp down on it. The use of fly ash should, there, there are a couple of, as, as we were discussing at the T, there's a couple of general principles and con uh, ideas that we can claim for fly ash use all over the world. But it needs to be site-specifically monitored, and it needs to be site-specifically applied. If you do not understand your fly ash properties in the chemical, physical, and microbiological properties of the soil, what the soil condition is in terms of deficiencies, toxicities and leaching risk, what the requirements of the plant species are, and you try and match it to your proposed agricultural use, you're not going to get anywhere. It's always going to be questions that you need to constantly ask yourself. So to wrap up, never start a soil reclamation project with fly ash until all the resources are known, understood and available, as you might find yourself in a huge, huge problem. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I welcome any questions. Thank you. We have a time for a couple of questions. You'll choose. Do I choose? Okay. Which amount of all are used for reclamation of different Okay. At, at this stage, South Africa produces 30 million tons of fly ash per annum. We only use 10% of it in the concrete and uh, cement industry. The rest is disposed at this point in time. We are now embarking on, we've just written an amendment to our uh, Minister, uh, <coughs> Minister of uh, Environmental Affairs to change or make an amendment to our Waste Classification Act. As soon as we get that passed, which is, looks like it's being seriously considered, uh, we'll be able to use a lot more of this flyage. At this stage, it's at a testing phase. It's been proven. Um, if it goes through these certain testing procedures, which is writ will be written into our legislation, then it will be used. Because in the mining industry, <coughs> Once the, mi the, 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 the resource has been mined, that site is regarded as a waste disposal site because of the waste of the mining. <laughs> so using another waste to media uh, remediate another waste is acceptable and can if you're going to reduce the impact already of that environment. Because we have a lot of acid mine drainage, so you need to ask yourself the question, which is the bigger problem? Water quality in our country is really an issue, so we'd rather have um, less acid mine drainage and a much better better environment. So at this stage I can't tell you how many tons but we assuming that it's it's going to take off a lot because we got two new big power stations coming online in the next two years. And another question, do, do you uh, 
say that you present that you can have an uh, increase in the permeability of the soil. Yes. And uh, uh, from our experience, usually you have sealing effect. When you use fly ash, you can seal the soil. So yeah. how do you manage to get an increase in humidity? Well, we inc uh, is that after incorporation of fly ash? Did you find the correct thing? Yes, we use fly ash for silly yeah, layers. Yeah. Well, you see, I think you know, that's a very difficult one because with, our with the crops that we've cho we chosen, uh, with the pastures, which we have a very dense canopy cover, we find that our soils don't crust as easily as with your agro agronomic crops uh, because they are sh overshadowed easily. So we find that the... I don't know, this is just my hypothesis, that the surface, uh, at the surface you find that with... On the crust. On the crust. Well, the, well, but also these areas that, that we have revegetated have a lot of animal activity, so we have a constant surface breaking. So we haven't really picked up any issues with surface crusting, but um, that is definitely, I've heard, and that it could possibly be a huge problem. But yeah, I've got no, no answer for you on that one. I remember talking to you earlier, and in the United States, there's 20 times more manure than there is human waste. Mm. So my question would be, and you talked about it, the application of the alpha flash with the manure, are you doing much with that? We, we are. And I, I think that would assist a lot of this. Yeah. Can you lose people? We, we, we do a lot. We have a huge cattle industry, feedlot industry in our country. Not as big as the U.S., but nevertheless, in proportion to our size, we, we produce a lot of animal manure. Um, it was available quite extensively until they brought in methane capturing plants. And all of a sudden, the, the animal manure was removed from the agricultural industry. A lot less was available for soil amelioration. So now there's a huge uh, movement towards composting, composting of invasive plant <coughs> species which are high in nitrogen. And we're looking at considering using that again with, with fly ash. But uh, yeah, we've done work, chicken manure, cattle manure, pig slurry, all those different applications. Okay. Thank but you very much. Yeah.